the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's love. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 223. 1 Chronicles 1 to 3. Lecture 1 in Chronicles Gift. In reading the genealogy of Israel, we are faced with the grace of God, who silently and persistently worked with helpless people throughout history. First point God gave the people of South Judah one and two kings before and one and two chronicles after their 70 years of captivity at the Gifts. Thanks to God's gift of history through the books of one and two kings, the people of South Judah who were taken as captives to Babylon read it and educated themselves to become good vicks in a kingdom of priestess. After their time in Babylon, God gave them another gift, and this was one and two chronicles. The Book of Kings was a gift in the beginning of the 70 years, and it contained the reason as to why North Israel and South Judah had fallen. The reason was simple. They did not follow in David's way, but rather chose to follow Jeroboam's way. Chronicles was given as a gift after the 70 years. It is predicted to have been recorded after the second group of captives returned from Babylon. The book of Chronicles focuses on God who kept his promise. God who was pleased with David and Solomon's temple construction project and God who was pleased with Hezekiah's keeping of Passover. The reason for the assumption that Chronicles was written right after the return of the second group of captives is because 2 Chronicles 36 verses 22-23 and Ezra 1 verses 1-3 is similar in content. Some believed that Chronicles may have been recorded by Ezra. The book of Chronicles starts from the monarchy of Saul and lists South Judah's monarchy. It also focuses on the days of David, Solomon, Ezra, Hezekiah, and Josiah. The records can be seen to have provided consoling words for the captives who returned. The writer of Chronicles emphasizes that Ezra and the priests and Levites were greatly blessed. The main records of history in the Old Testament are as follows. The first is Deuteronomy, which records the 40-year history of the Israelites after Exodus. The second is the Book of Kings, which starts with Saul and ends with Jedekiah. The third is Chronicles, which started with the death of Saul and then records the story of David, Solomon, and the kings of South Judah. Second point, the genealogies written in the Bible are the fulfillment of God's promise. This is the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Some may think that genealogy is the story of people. However, genealogy is about the fulfillment of God's promise to humans. The Bible records numerous genealogies. The first is after the flood in Genesis. This was the fulfillment of God's promise to be fruitful and multiply in numbers. The second was the genealogy after the establishment of a kingdom of priests. This was the fulfillment of God's promise about how those who followed would be blessed and those who did not would be punished. The third was God's promise that he would bless the descendants up to the thousandth generation and the evil would be punished up to the third or fourth generation. 
The most important genealogy of all is Jesus' genealogy. The genealogy in Chronicles started from Genesis with Adam and records David and his descendants. Matthew's genealogy started with Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 and traces the next 2,000 years up to Jesus. But to look closely, we can see that Chronicles proposes the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Matthew praised Judah since David was from the tribe of Judah. And because David proposed the idea of constructing the temple, we can see that Matthew certainly did his research before writing this genealogy. Thus, Matthew chapter 1 contains the history from Abraham to David to Jesus Christ. Third point, God gave the rights of the firstborn to Jacob, but Esau was also given the blessing of a nation. The genealogy in 1 Chronicles chapter 1 has the following characteristics. The first is that it starts with Adam and goes on to Noah and his three sons. The writer uses Genesis 5 verses 1 to 32 to distinguish the time before the flood. As such, the genealogy in Chronicles teaches where the roots of Israel came from. The readers could understand that their history has long and intricate details. The genealogy that starts with Adam and his three sons starts to carve its way through to the Israelites. God selected the kings based upon this long history. We can see through the genealogy and the history how much God put in his efforts towards the people. The second genealogy is from Noah to Abraham. It goes through Noah's sons and also the instant of the Babel Tower. Noah's genealogy extends from Noah's son Shem, which connects to Abraham. The third is the genealogy of Abraham and his son Ishmael. We know that Abraham's line was continued by Isaac, but God also blessed Ishmael. The fourth is the genealogy of Esau, the son of Jacob. Esau became the ancestor of the Edomites through God's blessing. The Edomites formed a monarchy before Israel's monarchy. Through their genealogy, we can learn that their monarchy was not hereditary. A genealogy contains a long time and a lot of names. We can learn a lot from a genealogy. Fourth point, Chronicles reveals the start of the 12 tribes and how Jacob's blessing was fulfilled through David. Abraham's descendants were divided into 12 and the tribe of Levi, whom God set aside as a priestess of a kingdom of priests. God also set aside the tribe of Judah to fulfill his history. The record in Chronicles focuses on the tribe of Judah and especially David. David's story was a fulfillment of Jacob's blessing to Judah and also God's fulfillment of his promise. Therefore, out of the many genealogies in Chronicles, the genealogy of Judah is depicted as one with importance. A few names stand out whilst reading the genealogy of Judah. The names of Caleb's descendants were named as places in Judah, such as Hebron, Shema, Gibeah, and so on. Fifth point, David's genealogy applied not only during the days of Jerusalem, but also after the fall of Israel. Now we come to David's genealogy. David's sons and daughters are recorded. The sons born in Hebron were the sons who were born during the time David ruled over Judah for seven years and six months. The children after that were born during the 33 years David ruled in Jerusalem. Next is the genealogy of Solomon to Zedekiah. The third is the genealogy of David's descendants, including Jehoiachin who was taken as a captive to Babylon during the second round of captivity. 
it shows that although David's line of monarchy came to a close with Zedekiah, David's genealogy continued. Zerubbabel, who returned with the first group of captives, was the descendant of David and the grandson of Jehoiachin. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondok app. The Tondok app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyango Zo has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zo is a sought after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondok app.